Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. And today we're going to continue on with our tutorial for Gary Grigsby's War in the West. Now this is part number six, and we've been moving through how combat works in this game, uh, just kind of going through the mechanics of it, looking at units and unit cards, all right, and the unit counters out on the map. Today we're going to talk about something related but a little different called support units. And support units are one of those things that I think people when they're new to the game find a little confusing. So let me just give you a big general idea of what support units are. Okay, so first of all let me tell you what they're not. They're not represented on the map. Okay. The, uh, this is a divisional level game, and so generally speaking, unless you break it up, a division is the smallest unit counter that you would see for ground forces out on the map. It's division level, so almost all of these are divisions, and then the core headquarters that command them, all right? Core headquarters up to army headquarters that command the cores. Uh, but you know, on the bottom level, there are divisions, okay? But there are a lot more units in this game. And anything smaller than a division, generally speaking, is rep is called something called a support unit. Now, it is not put out on the map. And why is that? Well, there are hundreds of them. And if you put all of these support units out on the map, you wouldn't even be able to see the map at all. It would cover everything uh, and cover it about 10 deep. So support the developers decided instead of having these support units be counters on the map, they would be directly attached to units that are represented on the map, okay? So generally these support units are at the battalion level. And, you know, usually during World War II, about two to three battalions would make up a division, okay? Well, they, you've got all of these specialized battalions that would, you know, kind of be part of a division, but they're also, you know, kind of uh, at the headquarters. So like artillery during this time in World War II could fire for miles and miles. So there was no reason to have it down at the division level right on the front lines. The headquarters would have it and it, it would decide what to do with the artillery. This game works exactly the same way. So just think of it like this. <clears throat> that support units are units that, generally speaking, are smaller than divisions. They could be battalions, companies, regiments, um, and they're not represented on the map itself. Instead, they're attached to units that are on the map, all right? All the way down to the division. You can attach support units directly to the division, but most often they're going to be attached to your core and army headquarters, all right? Uh, you know, 95% of the time, that's where they'll be attached, all right? Now, before we get into the core, let's just talk about attaching these two divisions, and I will show you how to do that and how, how the mechanics work, but uh, on a high level, let's just talk about attaching them to two divisions because there are a couple of special rules around that. One is you can only attach three support units maximum to a division. So if we go down here to one of these divisions right here, like the 90th US Infantry Division, oh, well, this is a perfect example. I didn't even know that, I swear to you, I didn't. And you see this assigned tab, this is where you find your support units and where they are. It's on the assigned tab on the back of the unit card, okay? Here are the U.S. Tank Battalion, the U.S. Tank Destroyer Battalion, and the 291st U.S. Combat Engineer Battalion are all attached to 90th U.S. Infantry Division. They fight with them just like they're part of the division, um, but, but they're support units. They're just not represented on the map. Instead, they're attached to this unit card, uh, but they, you know, they go automatically directly into battle with this division as if they were part of it. If we click over here and look at elements, this is what generally makes up the base of this division, all right? And so, you know, we've <clears throat> talked about table of equipment and how, 
you know, each one of these elements, there are, for instance, 203 rifle squads in the 90th U.S. Division. There are 234 bazooka squads in here, okay, machine gun, so on and so forth. That makes up the backbone or the base level U.S. Infantry Division at this time, okay? If you think it needs more help, or maybe you just, I mean, you have a lot of these, so maybe you give three of these to every division. You know, if we've got enough, why not? Because if you click on this, like the 712th U.S. Tank Battalion, when you click on this, this has a card just like every unit that's on the map. It just so happens to not have a counter on the map, but it tells you everything about this support unit. It's armor. Obviously, it's a U.S. tank battalion. It's got 720 men, zero guns, but 72 AFVs. Okay. Uh, it's got a combat value, offensive and defensive. It's got a TOE or table of equipment, and, and you can set the max if you don't want your support units to be filling up completely because maybe you're a little low on things for the actual divisions themselves. You can reset that. This will show you who the headquarters is um, <clears throat> or who it's it's attached to, in this case, 90th U.S. Infantry. It's, it's got a morale. It's got supply needs. It's got transport. It's got everything that a unit normally has. You can even go look at its elements. And so this game is modeled down to this level. I mean, this is a battalion. You could go see... These 72 AFVs or tanks, it's got, uh, you know, the M5A1 Stewart, 18 of those, 36 of these M4 Shermans. Uh, set, well, this is the A1, this 17 of the M4 Shermans. How much fatigue? Everything that you can see for a unit, you can see for a support unit. Uh, again, it just doesn't have a counter on the map. That's the only difference. Um Okay, so when something, I, I said there are two special rules about uh, attaching them to divisions. You can only attach three maximum, and you cannot directly attach artillery or rocket battalions. All right, so the more, uh, the bigger gun artillery during World War II, that was run out of Corps headquarters or Army headquarters. That was not run at the division level. Uh, those big guns can shoot for miles, right? The big artillery guns. And so they were not down on the front lines. They were back at headquarters, and they were... Uh, you know, they had spotters out there saying we needed it this and this coordinates. And so those can only be attached to headquarters. All right. But tank battalions, tank destroyers, engineers, they can all be attached to divisions. And <clears throat> this there's a little more to this, but I'll just say this now. So when I refer it to it later, you'll know what I'm talking about. Support units that are directly attached to a division automatically are committed to a battle this division is in. Meaning, if this division gets in combat this turn, all three of these support units will be part of that combat. Okay? They, it's just as if they're part of the division. The differentiation there is, if they're attached to a headquarters, whether it be core, army, army group, uh, the hell, the high headquarters can have them. If they're attached there, the commander has got to pass a dice roll, okay? It, or certain, yeah, a bunch of dice rolls probably, but it's got to pass a dice roll. I think it's initiative is the score. It's got to pass that dice roll for the support unit to actually be committed to battle. Okay, so when they're at the core army, army group level, level, when they're attached directly to a headquarters, they have the commander has got to pass a dice roll. So you may say, <clears throat> why would I ever then not have these three or more, you know, as many as we can attach directly to divisions? Well, there, are <clears throat> excuse me, there are reasons for that. 
uh, actually very good reasons. I very seldom attach directly to divisions, but we'll get into that as I start to talk about attaching these things to headquarters, okay? So let's go talk about attaching to headquarters or what is attached to headquarters. And for that, we'll start at the seventh US core, okay? It is attached to first US army. So this is a core headquarters, three X's across here. We will right click and see in the assign tab, you'll see everything that this core headquarters commands. Now it is considered as commanding these support units as well okay so this is everything it commands but it will show you the divisions it commands it will show you any uh battalions that are on the map that it commands then it will show you support units here that are attached to it all right and so this one shows you a pretty good mix of the different general classifications of support units there is the big general classification <clears throat> called artillery, okay? The big classification, anti-tank, anti-aircraft, self-propelled artillery. So these are just big guns that pro propel themselves. Engineer, all right? And mortar. There are others. There are rockets. I think there are bicycle recon, uh, but generally speaking, the big ones are artillery, anti-tank, anti-aircraft, engineers, and then you have things like mortars and stuff like that. Those are the big general classifications of our, of uh, support units, excuse me, okay? So let's click on one of these, like the 18th U.S. Field Artillery Battalion. And again, you can see it's artillery. That's the NATO symbol for artillery. You can see the offensive and defensive. Now, don't be confused. Artillery actually is much more effective than this, but often what it does doesn't add to combat value. It adds to disrupting enemy combat value. All right, so it, it's kind of more focused on on degrading the enemy's combat value. So don't be deceived by saying, oh gosh, it's only worth 0 0.1 or one point of CV. It, it really is much more effective than that. But what it does is disrupt the enemy, okay? And you can see who it's attached. Again, this has every stat that a unit normally has. You can even see the elements. It's got 12 105 millimeter howitzers. Okay, cool. Now you see here support. We're going to get to that right now because I want to kind of differentiate something here. We're back at 7th U.S. Corps headquarters. All right, it's commanded by Joseph L. Collins. Um, old fighting Joe Collins, right? We're under elements, all right? So elements is what makes up this unit counter, this unit. And you see support. You probably say, oh, okay, cool. So support units, that's what we're talking about. No, no, these are not support units. These are support elements. And I know that kind of can be confusing sometimes when you first look at it. But what this is, what support elements are, are the men that are there at headquarters making sure the logistics work, making sure that everybody has you know enough buttons on their uniforms, shoes, they're on the radio, uh, talking about you know we need this many jeeps over here. It's all of those support elements that make up a headquarters. Okay, Th those are all the headquarters functions. That's support elements, right? And you can look here total support, how much of it is organic within this, this unit, how much uh, they need. Well, they don't have enough yet. Um, but those are support elements. What we're talking about are actually combat units, support units, okay? So again, artillery, anti-tank, anti-aircraft, uh, mortar engineers. Okay, so if this, all of these are at the core level, what does that mean practically? What it means is, is this core commander, and this is why it's important to have good or as good a commanders as you possibly can, is that this core commander, when any of his divisions or fighting combat units on the map, when they get into a battle, that commander can commit up to six support units under his command to that battle, 
All right, there's a maximum of six per battle, but this core headquarters, if his units here, these are all under seventh US core, right? Let's, uh, well, actually, let's go up here. What are they under? These are under, uh, well, here's a guy under seventh. Here's two under seventh. And I'm just going to do a hasty attack really fast. Um, Actually, let's do a deliberate attack because I want to talk about that. We're going to do a deliberate attack there, okay? And now, you know, the Germans um, committed some other troops in reserve to the battle. You can see that. We attacked here. The Germans, because of that reserve mode, committed that to the battle. But what did we commit to the battle? Well, we attacked with 130th uh, Lair Division. Okay, the 77th Infantry Division. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was like, wait a minute. That doesn't look right. Those are the defenders. This is what we attacked with. 7th U.S. Corps. Sorry. Ridiculous. 3rd U.S. Armored Division. All right. We saw that. Uh, that was from here, right? That's the 3rd U.S. Armored Division. It's adding 229 combat value. All right. The 30th U.S. Infantry Division was part of this scrap. They're underneath there if we clicked on that again then you see the support units that were put into that remember that tank battalion that we looked at at 7th u.s headquarters uh US, our core headquarters that's it it was committed to this battle joe collins put that in this battle and it added 26 combat value not i mean that's not nothing right this whole infantry division only had you know added 70 to the combat value you also see that Joe Collins decided we needed a lot of artillery. And you may say, one, zero, one. Oh gosh, they didn't do anything. Not true. Again, they are trying to disrupt enemy combat value. Okay. And that's kind of what goes into this 158. The defender, the Germans, originally had 172 as their raw combat value. By the time all of that stuff happened, artillery and otherwise, it came out on the other side uh, when you bake the cake at 158. And so that artillery may have actually had quite a bit of an effect. Now you'll see the final one that he put in here. And again, it's Joe Collins's call. He put in the U.S. Combat Engineer Battalion. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, he put in six into this battle. And that is the maximum. That's all he can do. He can't do more than six. Um, right. Okay, so then you say, well, great. You know, he got them into that battle. Now they're spent. We can't do anything with them wrong and that is why i keep these at the core headquarters is let's just say all of these units were also part of 7th us if they attack here those very same support units that were in this battle can also be committed to this battle it's you know because these are one week turns it's as if those support units are sitting here and on day one or two we send them down here to help with this battle then they come back to the headquarters then we send them down to help with this battle so they can be used multiple times depending on the commander's discretion all right and so that's that's the kind of flexibility that i like and I would much prefer they be at the core level. Now, you may every once in a while fail a dice roll and they don't get committed to a battle and that really stinks. But it's much more powerful, in my opinion, that they could be in one turn committed to three or four different battles and maybe help you win all of those. Um, to me, that's more of an advantage than the downside of maybe they don't get committed one time or two times uh, at all because your commander fails his dice roll. So I almost always keep these at the core level. Now, a couple of things to remember about this, all right? And that is that your units on the map they can only get help from support units if they're within command range. And so if we click on these divisions, you know, 7th U.S. Corps is its commander. They have got to be within five hexes of the Corps headquarters to get the benefit of the support units from the Corps headquarters. That's why when we talk about, quote unquote, in command, that's really one of, if not the most important part of that is only if they're quote unquote in command can they get those support units and it matters not only when you're attacking 
It also matters during the opponent's turn when they're attacking you. And so if your units are in command and they get attacked, so they're within five hexes of the core headquarters and they get attacked, that commander can send them support units for that battle as well. So it's not only on the attack. That's why you always, at the end of a turn, try to get as many of your units in command or within the number of hexes they need to be to their their headquarters so that if they do get attacked, they get the benefit of support units if that general decides that's a good thing to do or and, and or uh, passes his dice roll to do so. Now I can tell you most of the time they pass this dice roll uh, to get support units out there. The other thing I wanna point out from this screen is the difference between a hasty and a deliberate attack when it comes to support units. Now on the defensive, so if you're being attacked and they're in, you're in command within five hexes of a core or 15 hexes of an army headquarters that they're directly attached to, you automatically will, you know, have the ability to get support units. But when you're attacking, okay, there's a, there's a difference. And that is if you're doing a deliberate attack and you're in command, then you, yes, you have the full availability of getting support units uh, if X, Y, and Z are passed. You know, the general wants to, he passes his dice roll if you do a deliberate attack. So that's one thing. But let's talk about a hasty attack, okay? So let's just, you know, I don't know, pick these units and do a hasty attack here, all right? Now they, the Germans have committed something else to the defense, that's fine. Uh, we'll pause here. Now, this was under the command of the 8th U.S. Corps. So we've been looking at 7. I assume this is the 8th. I don't know. We'll go look at it. It doesn't really matter for our purposes here. It was 90th Inf Infantry Division that did the attacking. Okay. And then look at all of the support units it got. It got uh, a tank battalion. This is a different one than the one we saw before. Uh, it got U.S. field artillery, okay, U.S. tank destroyer. Wow, they got some good stuff here. They got six support units. So Middleton passed his test. He decided we needed the help. He sent them out there to help, okay? So you're like, okay, great. So during hasty attacks, you get them as well. Yes, only if the headquarters has not moved that turn. All right, so that's one of the reasons I always move my headquarters last is because a deliberate attack, it doesn't matter if the headquarters is moved or not because you're spending enough movement points to get the benefit of quote unquote planning. With a hasty attack, it's kind of a hit and run attack, right? And so it would probably be hard for the headquarters to get these support units out to you in time because they're kind of an attack of opportunity, okay? But if the headquarters hasn't moved, it's got a chance to say, oh, okay, you know, I can send out support units really quickly. Uh, we're all set up here. We've got our tents all set up. You know, the general's got his cigars and his fine brandy. Everybody's good. Uh, we can get the support units out there in time. So if it's a hasty attack, the unit will get the benefit of support units or could, depending on those things again, could get them if the headquarters hasn't moved. But if we move this headquarters, which is, is the eighth, okay? If I move it back here and they try to do a hasty attack again, we'll pause. Oh, uh, why did you send these? Gosh, I had to pause there for a second because I was like, wait a minute, why are there support units here? Oh, okay, I know why. So we moved this guy, right? Now, remember last time, so the core headquarters sent uh, support units, we said, right? Okay, perfect. Then I said, if you move and you do a hasty attack, which you can see right here I did, they won't send support units. Then you may say, why am I seeing support units? These are directly attached to 90th U.S. Infantry Division. That is an advantage of having them directly attached, which is if you're attacking on the move and your headquarters is moving a lot, the, the support units that are directly attached to the division are always committed to the battle. But as you see, we only have three this time because these are the three from 90th. 
the headquarters did not send any because remember last time we had six uh, because that's the maximum you can have but the headquarters sent three more last time but now it's moved and we did a hasty attack they can't send any more support units so just to you know kind of put a bow on that one or wrap that one up if you're doing a deliberate attack and you're in command you always have a chance to get support units if if all tests are passed okay if you do a hasty attack you only have a chance to get them from the core headquarters or army headquarters if that headquarters has not moved and you're you're in command okay simple enough all right so how do we handle these headquarters how do you, or uh, support units i'm sorry how do you move them around what do you do well there are various ways to move them around um, but there are two major ways that people do it that play the game all right and there's kind of the automated way and let me just show you that very quickly here um right here <clears throat> on the elements tab you'll see something called support level okay what does that mean well that is if you left this at three that's how many of each big general classification type of support of support units that this headquarters will try to obtain okay so it will try to get three artillery three anti-tank three anti-aircraft three engineers uh three of the mortars any classification here and we can see them all again here mortar engineer art self-propelled artillery anti-aircraft artillery it will try to get three of each one of those and to the extent that it has three it will send any excess back to the headquarters one step above it so here it would send any excess that it has if you have this set on three back to first u.s army okay you may be asking some questions about that well ultimately it can only commit up to six in battle right and a core headquarters can to any one battle and the division may have some attached which further you know uh, knocks down the number that it would give to that division so if you've got all of your support units here at eighth u.s corps you may not have enough in seventh u.s corps and so we'll look at seventh now these start off pretty even uh, i can tell you in war in the east they do not uh, there's it's very uneven some german corps have 25 support units attached to them some have two some have none and so you know basically what will happen is the game will automatically even these out so that every unit that's on three let's just say we set every single headquarters to a three every one of those the game will try to even them out and get everybody three of each type so you can't go in and say well i want three artillery but i only want two anti-aircraft it doesn't work that way if you have a three on here it's going to get three of every type or try to uh to the extent that you have them available now you can you know hit minus and go down to two if you only think you need two you can go up to four if you want all right and i uh my kind of take on this is it's not enough control for me it's a little too willy-nilly now uh, you know when you get three let's say you know you may have units that are out running through the fields of france frolicking in in the prairie of france they don't need engineers you know so why do i want three engineer uh units or battalions sitting here with seven u.s corps fighting joe collins don't like that i'll tell you that much he wants more control and so using this support level system never has felt quite you know like enough control for my ocd it may be fine for believe me you can play this game and enjoy the heck out of it with everything set at three you know so don't feel like oh gosh if i don't do this you know I, I i won't like the game it's maybe you know when you start and you first play it the first few times through you just you know have it on three you say 
you know, I'm going to learn the game. And when I'm more comfortable later on, then I'll take more direct control. Now, I will tell you that good players, there are, you know, very good players out there that the way they do this, and it's kind of, you know, recommended, or a lot of people have said this works, is let's just go to 3rd U.S. Army. Okay, and then that'll kick us up to the 12th U.S. Army Group, which will click us up to S-H-A-E-F. So let's go all the way back here. Now, this can also have support units, as you can see right here. Dwight D. Eisenhower looking down at the 244th U.S. Field Artillery Battalion. So he's got support units. Uh, we'll get to how that all works out in a moment. Um, let's see what he's got his support level set up. Oh, this doesn't actually have one. You know why? Because everything will flow back up to the top. In le Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so he's got a little... Oh, this is... Oh, I kicked out to here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Maybe he does have a support level. He does. It's a three. Well, <laughs> he's got a lot more than of three artillery. What will happen is these will all... Fl I don't know why he keeps doing that. Um, these will all flow up to the top that's why he's got so much unless you give it commands otherwise and i'm going to show you how to do that in a minute um okay so eisenhower's got all of these up here now i know really good players that would say what you want to do here is set his um support level i just did that again holy smokes it's killing me man elements there we go set uh the top up here set it to one okay done and then his subordinate which is here 12th u.s army group we already looked at that set it to two all right and then his subordinate which we were looking at third u.s army set that to three and then set the cores to either three or four. So you go one, two, three, four. This pushes them all down out to the front lines, right? So, you know, when Eisenhower, when they look at that, the game looks at that, it says, oh, wherever the heck Eisenhower was, he in the middle of London, probably having a nice tea or something. No, that's UK Home Force. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But anyway, when they look, when the game looks at Eisenhower, it'll say, well, he's only requesting one of each type. Okay, well, we can get all of these out of here and spread them around elsewhere. So then it goes to the army groups here, like the 12th U.S. Army Group, and that's set on two. Now they'll get two of each kind, all the army groups, all right? Then it goes to the army headquarters, and they'll get three of each type. And then it goes to the core headquarters, and they'll get three or four, whichever one you want to set it at. And I know a lot of people that, that say that's totally sufficient to do it that way. It keeps a lot down at the core level. Now you may be saying, why do I have any at the army level at all? Well, you may have things directly attached to the army. Uh, and so they would need support units. I say things, divisions directly attached to it. But you can also, if a core is underneath an army, you can right click here. You can go assigned. You can hit this button called assign support units. Let's click on that. This assign support units, when you click on that, you can go and look at all of the support units that are attached to anything above this headquarters in the chain of command. Okay, so this is, you know, every support unit attached to something above this in the chain of, above this, the 8th U.S. Corps in the chain of command. Well, that happens to be the 1st U.S. Army. Now, it would go up to the Army Group level as well, and then on to the, the overall head command. Um, it's not showing that now, and I think it's because they're across the English Channel, and so they couldn't get them here. I, I, I believe that, well, the Army Group isn't, though. Hold on. Let's go to First Army, U.S. First Army. Oh, okay, then 12th U.S. Army Group, 12th U.S. Army Group. Oh, it has none. Okay, well, that's why. Uh, if this did have support units, and see, it can't get any because its commander is across the water. I mean, obviously, you can't be doling out support units if you're not across the English Channel yet. Uh, but 12th has none. So 12th has none for right now. If we set its level 
uh, let's go to elements. If we set it to a two, it will try to get two of each type. And then when we go down here to third US Army, no, that's not what this is assigned to. This is actually assigned to first US Army. When we go here and we go to assign support units, we would see them here. All right, but let's go back to the core headquarters. Uh, which is the 8th U.S. Corps. We right-click, assign support units, and now we see everything that 1st U.S. Army has because that's its direct commander. We know 12th Army Group, that, that is this is commander, doesn't have any, and we can't get any from across the English Channel. Okay, so it could pick from all of these, and you may say, well, okay, this is like a menu. You can go in here and pull any of these down to your 8th uh, U.S. Corps that you want. So, like, Let's just click that one and let's click that one. You see they disappear. Now let's go to our core right here. Maybe I'll have to click on, click back on there. Oh, where did they go? Where did they go? Oh, there they are. Uh, the US uh, AAA, what is this, Triple A? Like they're going to come out and fix your car? Uh, gun Battalion right here. They have an asterisk by them. We just pulled these down into this core. So you can go above, when you hit this assign support units, you can go up here and go get these. It's like, like I said, it's like a menu. Now I will point out in War in the East 2, there is a disadvantage of doing that a little bit because there's something called you know, combat prep points for all of your units, not just your amphibious units. And we'll get to that in this uh, tutorial, but they get half of the combat prep points. But for war in the West here, that's not a concern. You can go and pick any of these you want. Now you may say, what's the asterisk mean? That means you can't move them again this turn. You can only move them once a turn. And so now that we've pulled these two anti-aircraft, let's go do it again. Assign support units. Uh, what do we want? Let's, um, we could pull some of this armor, armor if we wanted to, but let's pull like this combat for 51st and 157th engineers. Okay, we go down to engineers, 51st and 157th. And that commander could use those this turn during battle. All right. How else could we do this? Well, let's say we don't want this field artillery here. We go up here and we say, okay, that's right. The eighth, that's what we're dealing with here. The eighth U.S. Corps. Let's click on that. Let's say, you know what? Actually, I want to push it up to our army group. We saw that the army group doesn't have any. Let's push it up there. Okay. Now then we'll go to first U.S. Army. First U.S. Army is down here. Then we'll go to 12th U.S. Army Group. Right click on that. And there it is. 969th U.S. Field Artillery Battalion. So any of these support units that are on the back of the cart. Now it's got an asterisk. We can only move it once a turn. Next turn it will not have an asterisk. Uh, but any of these support units. You can go here. And you can just change their commander. There's no cost of doing so. Uh, you just push them wherever you want. Let's say... Hell, I don't know. I mean, there's. I mean, we could give them to Eisenhower if we wanted to. And now that that artillery will be up there, we can click on this one, and we could say we actually want you to be in Third U.S. Army or Twelfth U.S. Army Group or the British Army Group, uh, Seventh Seventh U.S. Corps. Now let's go over to Seventh U.S. Corps, which we know is right there, and look down here, and there it is. It's got an asterisk. asterisk. Okay, so you're saying, okay, I kind of, you know, get that system, but what's the optimal way of doing this? Well, like I said, you can um, just do that one, two, three, four method, and I think you'll be fine. And you may say, well, why do we have Eisenhower even keeping one? Or why do we have the army group even keep... E even keeping two well because of what i just showed you you can always go up and grab those and bring them down if you think you're going to need them and so that one two three four method allows you to have four of each type or or three you can do it either way you may not have enough for four uh so down at the core level you could have three of each type and then if you don't think that's going to be enough let's say you think gosh i want to have six artillery this time you could go up to the army headquarters and pull those down. You know, you could just keep going up the chain. And so we're here at 8th. Let's say 8th says, gosh darn it, 
I need more self-propelled artillery. Can I get any? Well, I don't know. Let's assign support units. Do we have any? Yeah, we've got four sitting at its army headquarters. Let's pull them all down because I want five self-propelled artilleries this turn. I, for some reason, I'm jonesing for self-propelled artillery. Well, there you go. Uh, they're all down here now. They can all be used in battle. The asterisk only means you just can't move them again. You can only do it once. Okay, so that's the base method of doing it. How do I do it? <laughs> well, I do something called the push-pull method, and I think a lot of advanced players do it this way. And the way that works is this, is let's go to the commander screen. Where is the commander screen? There it is. Commander's report. Okay, let's go to HQs. Oh, you know what? Before we do this, sorry, I wanted to show you one other thing. And that is, so this is 8th U.S. Corps, um, show subordinates, all right? If you ever want to know about these support units, go to show subordinates. When this comes up, it'll show you 8th U.S. Corps. That's the commander. That's who we wanted to see. We click that on their card. We see the divisions. It's directly commanding okay and you can see you know it's got 10,000 men 13,000 men etc in green here these are all of the support units in here so uh that are attached to this core headquarters so you can go look at those and if there's something you don't want in here you could click on it um and you can see its supply details blah blah blah, blah. you could go to it you could change its commander here if you wanted to. Um, it'll tell you how many men, how many AFVs, what its morale is, combat value, all of that stuff. It's all right here on the unit card. So again, that's show subordinates, commander's report. All right. But let's go back to the commander's report from a different direction. And that is, oh gosh, I got to get that filter off. I'm so bad about these filters. There we go. Okay. Uh, clear unit display filters. That's the button I always seem to forget where it is. Um, all right. So let's, these are every, this is every unit you have as the allies, including support units. Okay. Let's go to headquarters. Okay. That's great. Let's click on none. You're like, what the heck is going on? Let, actually, let's go to all. Uh, let's go to all first. And you see this up here, support level. You can set every headquarters support level right here. And so let's say for the army levels, we, you want to, or let's say the core levels, you want to do what I was just talking about. Um, there they are. Let's get off. Let's go to none. Sorry. There we go. Let's say at the core level, you want them all to be three. Now they already are, but let's say that you wanted them to all be four. You want to kick it up? You can kick, click on support level, hit four. They'll all go to four. Okay. Say you wanted them to be two. They'll all go to two. Let's say you just wanted this one to be three. You can do all of that right here on support port level. This is your commander's report. Go to HQs. All I did was sort for cores. Uh, let's just say all again. All right. And let's say none. And then let's say I just want to look at army groups. Okay. We've got the 12th U.S. Army Group and the 21st British Army Group. Now we talked about maybe only having those at a level two. So let's hit a two. And now they're both two. So how do I do this though? Um, let's say none let's say all so now we've got them all here this is every command unit in the game support level zero this is how i do it support level zero no unit no core headquarters army headquarters i say unit no headquarters in the game will keep or ask for or request any support units and you may say what what the heck when you ask for zero at any headquarters, each turn it pushes those support units up one level. So if they're at the core level and you've got that set at zero, the next turn they will be up at the army level. If you've got that set at zero, the next turn it will be at the army group level. If you've got that set at zero, the next turn it'll be at high command. 
that's the way I like to do it because I like to get them all up as high as I can. The reason being is there's no disadvantage to that. There are only advantages because it doesn't cost you anything to pull them back down for individual turns. And so we were talking about that eighth US core. Let's just say that it's moving around the map and it doesn't need any support units. Well, I've got it, you know, it's not fighting any battles. So I've got it at zero, it's got none. They're all sitting up with Dwight Eisenhower, you know, hanging out in London. Uh, okay, what happens though if they're about to get in a battle? I can always pull them back down to that core headquarters whenever I need them. But you may say, what happens if you get attacked? Your core headquarters doesn't have any support units to help you. That is true. And so what I'll do is I will let them all move to the top. Then I will pull down the ones I want or the ones I think cores could use or armies, but I usually don't have many at the army level. Uh, I have them either all the way at the top or at the core. I will pull down, you know, three artilleries, uh, two anti-aircraft, one, you know, anti-tank or something like that. And then I'll lock it and I'll show you that in just one second. So I'm going to set everything to zero. All right. Then what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to hit, so these are all on zero. Let's just confirm that. Oh, these are all of them. Zero. Okay. Now we're going to hit none. All right. Then we're going to go high command. Well, we've got the U.S. high command and the U.K. home force. Well, this is like the overall high command, right? Uh, but it happens to be Eisenhower that's leading it. This support level, I'm going to put at a nine. And that's what pulls them all to the top. All right. So they're going to be getting pulled up because the game is going to constantly be trying to fill that up with nine and they naturally move up anyway. Uh, so I'm going to put those at nine. All right. So now I've got that. Now you're not going to see it because we're not going to run a turn, but let's talk about locking though. Let's just for a moment, imagine there are no support units at this core level. I would hit assign support units and I would see what's available. All right. Now I would say in this war in the West game, because Eisenhower can't send them out, I would actually change this. Let's go back really fast. I don't want you to do something wrong. Let's actually put this support level for these guys at zero. And instead, let's go to the army group level because I know they're already in France. I've seen them. Let's put those at nine right? It doesn't do any good to have them all go to Eisenhower. Uh, he can't get them back to us. But these are already in France. These guys are the 12th US and the British. So Montgomery and Bradley are already in France. Let's put those at nine. Okay, I just wanted to make sure you didn't start the game and then say, why the heck did he tell me to do that? Okay, let's make believe that we have no support units out here. 8th U.S. Corps, what are they going to be doing? Well, they're going to be attacking. They're probably going to have the Luftwaffe coming after them. So what I would probably want to do is uh, get three anti-aircraft, okay? I would probably want to get an anti-tank destroyer. That's going to, I assume, help out here. I would probably want to get two or three. Now, you got to remember, you've got another U.S. Corps, so you can't take it all, right? I'd probably get a cavalry group, and I would probably get a couple of engineers, um, construction units. Now, do, don't have these at the core level. Put these either at the army or the army group level because these will work on your rail yards and they'll work on your ports. Uh, you don't need them down at the core level, which are your fighting units, okay? So don't, don't have these down at the core level. First U.S. Army, this is a perfect place to have them. Okay, so I pulled all of that stuff down to eighth and you can see the asterisk. Let's just imagine those are the only ones in here and I like the mix. I can just go up here. Let's go back to elements. I can go up here. I can click there. Uh, for some reason, this is over on elements. It really should be on the assign tab. I don't know why they did that as a development choice because uh, you got to click over here to something that says support. That's not what the, we're talking about. But anyway, when we click over here on elements, if you click that zero, it locks it. So, you know, instead of having this on one or two or three, what do you do? You lock it. And the ones that are asterisked here that I just pulled down, uh, 
again, make believe none of the other ones are here, will be locked to this unit. Now, it doesn't mean the uh, core headquarters is completely locked. If in this sense, it can bring new ones in. It just won't let any of the ones it has out, right? So if we get to next turn, all the ones with an asterisk we would have here, they would be here and then we could hit assign support units and bring more in. And even if it's locked, we can bring them in. It's just that they can't quote unquote escape uh, up the chain of command. Okay, so just to recap really quickly, I'm gonna bring the pencil out. We have artillery. Artillery disrupts other units. You want this, you want already when you're on the attack, I mean, it also helps on the defense obviously, but really if you're attacking, you really want artillery. I generally think, you know, like four artillery support units in a core headquarters. So you already, AA, I always like to have with uh, the allies in this game anyway, at least three anti-aircraft, okay? You have tank battalions. I'm going to call these like uh, tank and infantry, all right? You've got uh, tank and infantry type battalions that can add to your combat value. I generally like to have, you know, like two of these if, if they're around. You also have uh, self-propelled already. Uh, you know, one of these is probably a good. You have anti-tank. I like to at least have two anti-tanks if I can get them. Now, these are a little harder to come by, but I like to have at least two at the core level. These are your fighting cores, right? Um, then you have engineers. I like to have at least two of those to break down. Uh, now they're called pioneers, okay? Engineers are called pioneers. Uh, Pio, Pio. Uh, I like to at least have two of those, uh, especially now if you're gonna be assaulting Paris, uh, Berlin or something like that, you probably want uh, four. You know, you want them to break down or if you're gonna be running into uh, Fort forts and fort levels the more engineers the better uh construction labor those should all be up at the higher headquarters like army uh or army group because they will be sitting in your towns repairing things so you want those at the army or army group level this is the core level then you can have at the army and army group level you can have the, some of this stuff but just have it like think of it as a menu you know you you've ordered dinner this is dinner but you may still be hungry at the end so you can go grab them out of an army or army group you still got them on the menu up there think of them that way so when i start a game uh, of the old war in the east and this war in the west now it's a little different in war in the east too go watch that video <laughs> but uh in those in these two games war in the east the original and war in the west the way i do this is the first thing i do pretty much the first thing i do in the game is i go set the high the high command now in this case it's a little odd right because in this scenario the high command is across the English channel, so they can't send us support units. But whatever the hell's in France or Europe, whatever the highest of that command is, set those to nine. It'll pull all support units up. And then your other units set the, that's supply priority. Uh, wait a minute, where is support level? Units, support level. Who the heck is it? Um, oh, dang it, Chrissy. Chrissy, a big dummy. Hold on. My name's Chris, by the way. I wasn't talking to somebody else. Uh, <laughs> uh, you got to be on headquarters. I'm sorry. I, I went over here to units and I said, where the heck is supply or uh, support level? Well, it's not here because divisions don't have support levels. They can have up to three, but you don't really set them that way. Okay, so support level nine at the highest now let's go to nine or none and let's go to all and if you see support level here you can see the one we locked all right so it doesn't have a support level we could uh sort them and you see here 21st british army group and the 12th u.s army group both have a support level of nine every other headquarters in the game has a zero now eventually these should all pretty much say locked 
right? You're going to lock in what you like, what you want. Now, at some point, you may not need that stuff anymore. You could either unlock it or you can go directly to this unit card. You can see what it's got, you know, here. So this is uh, the one that's locked, right? We could go here. Uh, just because it's locked doesn't mean you can't go to the 979th, click on its headquarters and reassign it. You know, you can do that. Locked uh, just simply means it won't move up the chain of command automatically each turn, which is how the game's set up. You lock it, it stays here unless you manually reassign it. All right. One last thing, let's just talk about divisions really quickly. So 90th uh, U.S. Infantry Division, we know it's got three support units. If you do not want these support units directly attached to it, you just X them out, and it goes to the core headquarters that's in charge of 90th U.S. All right, if we go to the 8th, those would be asterisked here right now. But let's say, oh gosh, we made a mistake. Oh no, we actually do want support units in the 90th. There's the 90th again. How do you do it? Just like you do it with headquarters. You can go up here. It's just like on the menu. The only difference is, is you can only do three. When I hit, when I click that third one, boom, it took me right back here. It wouldn't even allow me to try to get a fourth one. So the game does not want you to have four support units, my friend, uh, at the division level. Um, I guess I'll just do this one more time because I, I do understand it's a little confusing when you until you get your arms around it. Division, you can attach three. Automatically committed to battle. Automatically, all right? At the core level, it's unlimited. And you can either set the support level on the back of the core card. So set support level, set SL, all right? The commander has got to pass a test. Your unit, your division has got to be within command radius. Your commander has to pass a test, and it's his discretion whether he wants to send them out to the divisions. But the but the number that the core has is unlimited. Uh, you can have all different types, or you can set a support level one, two, three, four. Remember that method, or you can set them to zero and do the pull push method. Okay, at the army level, you know. You maybe want to set these at like two if you want to, or you could have them at zero, which I probably usually do, but then lock them in with construction and labor support units because those will help rebuild your towns, rebuild your rail, uh, rebuild ports, uh, rail yards. That's what you need them for. And these will generally be in bigger, bigger towns where you want that done. Same with army groups. Same with army groups, all right? So, you know, you have the automatic support level. You have the push-pull method. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Uh, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hopefully, you found this helpful. Uh, again, if you have a question at all, please let me, let me know in the comments. Or go to Discord. Uh, we have a really good Discord channel. Um, that you can find Strategy Gaming Dojo on Discord, or you can look underneath one of my videos or on the front page and come there and ask the question. There's a lot of really knowledgeable people there. Anyway, thank you so much. Strategy Gaming Dojo, I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.